Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be putting back on our on-chain analysis hat and discuss the market value to realized value Z-score, or MVRV Z-score. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. If you're not familiar with the MVRV Z-score, it's just equal to the market cap minus the realized cap over, or divided by the standard deviation of the market cap. And one of the reasons I like this indicator is because it's somewhat aesthetically pleasing to look at as it tends to describe the Bitcoin cycles fairly well. And, and we go from periods of high MVRV Z-scores during mania phases to low MVRV Z-scores during recovery years accumulation phases, et cetera. And you'll see that in general ebb and flow from you know overvaluation to under to over. Here is sort of briefly almost coming back to the undervaluation area, but we actually just went straight back up. This was the double peak cycle of 2013, then back to undervaluation for the better part of a year, and then overvaluation again, um, and, and so on and so forth. And one of the things you'll notice is that we tend to visit these lower levels um, at, at sporadic, sporadic time frames. You know, I mean, this one here was back in November of 2011, and then this next one was in January 2015, so maybe about three years, just over three years. But then the time frame from, from sort of this area over here to the next one was closer to, to four years. And then from here to where we are, you know, where we have been is about four years as well, right? If you take it from, say, like the end of 2018, early 2019, to the end of 2022, early 2023, you can see that it matches up um, in, a, in a somewhat similar manner. And this sort of reminds me of, of you know, when we looked at the MVRV, the MVRV Z score in the past, back in June, it didn't really seem like, you know, a low enough value to, to sort of really put a lot of merit into calling 17.5 as the bottom because, you know, it really didn't go nearly as low as it normally does. Um, at least what you might expect. And, and even in November, I mean, we, we, we talked about getting a crash in November and we in fact got one. The MVRV score did go just a bit lower. So if we actually measure this out and take a close look at, at where it went in June, it's around negative 0.251. And then over here in November, it went down to about point, negative 0.36. Now compare that to uh, you know, 2018, it was all the way down at around negative 0.492, I believe was the lowest point, negative 0.492. Um, and then I think the one before that was even lower, negative 0.598. So essentially it was negative 5.9, then negative 4.9, and then this one's not negative 3.9, it was a little bit different, it was negative 0.36. So relatively deep value. Um, and, you know, I mean, you can see kind of where it is. The, the point is really when you look at this is we tend to go to sort of below the zero level for an extended period of time. And then we, we break back above it at some point. And um, eventually we go into another parabolic rally. But if we really break this down, what we'll see in the first cycle, we went below the zero line, popped back above it and then it actually came below it again for you know quite a long period of time as we just sort of consolidated before a true parabolic rally. In 2015, we actually did something a little bit different. You know, we came well below the zero line, went up to just around zero, popped our head above zero, back below, and then back down again. And this was sort of like a, um, a double bottom. Now, it doesn't look like a, a double bottom on this chart because this is only showing daily closes, not, not the actual wicks that occurred. On the wicks, it was more or less a double bottom. But you can see the, the MVRB Z-score and where it was, it was still well below zero. So you had 2015, which was more or less just a consolidation year, right? A recovery year after, after sort of coming out of a year-long bear market. 2019, arguably would have been or could have been the same but instead we you know we sort of came below the zero line for a while then had a massive rally where bitcoin essentially went up 4x from the lows followed by about another what nine month bear market before a true parabolic rally into new all-time highs so this was was actually quite a bit different than what we saw in in 2015 but 
during March 2020, we actually did come back below the zero line again. And so where are we today? Well, you can see back in June, we came below the zero line, popped our head above, came below it again for a little while, uh, went slightly above in November, and then we had the, the FTX crash, uh, and not very similar play, but I mean, it was essentially a very similar move like we saw at the end of 2018, right? I mean, it wasn't as a severe of a drop as we saw at the end of 2018, but it did start in November, and, and we did see a, another capitulation. So now the MBRB score is coming in at, at around 0 .3, oh, 0 0.340. So right now the MBRB score is at, at around 0 0.340. So in the context of where the MBRB score is likely going to go in a future parabolic rally, it's still at relatively low levels. But in the context of, of sort of the cyclical behavior of Bitcoin, I think we're most likely, you know, if we were to say what what does this year compare the most to, it's not to me. It's not the having years of 20, you know, 2012, 2016, or 2020. It's not the bear market years of 2014, 2018, and 2022. It's more so akin to what we saw in 2015, which is over here, and 2019, which is over here, where essentially, and I've I've said this many times before, you spend about half the year getting the bears wrecked and half the year getting the bulls wrecked. Now in 2019, it was wreck the bears for half a year, then wreck the bulls for half a year. In 2015, it was wreck the bears for three months, then wreck the bulls for three months, then wreck the bears for three months, then wreck the bulls for three months, right? So the whole point, when you look at, at, at things like the MVR Z score, they, they help you identify sort of these recovery years, these consolidation years in Bitcoin, where unfortunately, you're likely not going to see rallies to new highs but it doesn't mean that you're not going to be presented with many opportunities to sort of, you know, increase your position in Bitcoin if you want to. Um, I'm sure some traders swing trade the sort of the ranges because in consolidation years, you take a look at like 2015, you know, we essentially just moved from, um, you know, a, a couple hundred dollars up to, you know, maybe four hundred dollars or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but something like that. And then, and then back again. Um, so I know some shorter term traders might take advantage of those ranges. Of course, in 2019, I don't think anyone was really expecting a rally to 14K, um, followed by another nine month bear market or so after that, before getting into a true parabolic rally into the next cycle. But I, I would argue that what you're most likely going to see this year is, is again, a recovery year where you spend about half the time moving higher, half the time moving lower could break that up in, in different months. So like, you know, 2018, 2014, 2022, we had like eight or nine red months. But in the recovery years, it split more or less half and half. And I think you're likely going to see the MVRVZ score do something like that, where it, you know, it comes back above the zero line like it is right now, eventually probably dips back below it again. And we just spend some time consolidating. And then once we get into 2024 and, and the next halving, ideally, um, you know, a rally uh, a, a more of a sustained rally where we can see the NVR Z score go to sort of much higher levels. So that's how I'm playing this year is just more or less as a, a recovery year. And that's what more, you know, that's what I would argue that the NVR Z score is, is sort of uh, saying it's likely going to be as well, especially when you look at it in the context of sort of coming out of these bear markets, right? So like coming out of this bear market, you then sort of recover for a while before going up. Coming out of this bear market, you sort of just recover for a while before really going up. And then again, right? You come down and you recover for a while uh, before, before generally trending higher. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.